Hi guys, and welcome to this Model Engineers workshop. Today in the workshop, the axle pump flange. Come on, let's take a look. Hi guys, I'm the chef. So today we're going to start on the axle pump itself, and for that we need the flange that bolts to the stretcher in the middle of the locomotive frames, and then this will eventually get it onto the pump body with a bit of silver soldering. And uh, we need a piece out of this slab here, uh, which will eventually be 44 by 55, six mil thick, four holes in the corners, one in each corner and a big hole in the middle. Now, as you can see, this has got some kind of Egyptian style patterning on it. This was a scrap yard find, cost me about 10 bucks, I think. Um, it's about eight and a half mil thick. Uh, it doesn't matter about the size. I've already started measuring out a little bit. This is the bit we need. So I'm going to get this into the power hacksaw, pop that chunk off, get it back into the power hacksaw, come down that line, and that's the bit we want. So there's going to be a fair amount of machining because we're going to clean off this back edge, back side rather, go over onto the front, get rid of that pattern. God knows what it used to be. Hopefully it's uh, nothing too important because, it, as I say, somebody threw it out. It's a one man's treasure. One man's trash, one man's treasure. This is my treasure. Uh, I've already had a piece off this. You can see that that is a machined edge. But uh, so, the flange for the axle pump. Right, so this is going to go in the axle, cut down there, cut down a bit off. And when I've done that, I'll bring you back. Right guys, so there we are, that's the piece we need, nice big chunk of brass, uh, just zip through the hacksawing of that, so long cut first, short cut second, if you noticed when I was doing the short cut, the remainder of this block was in here, in the other side of the vise, just so that the vise doesn't uh, twist as you're tightening up, because of course this was then not full length of the vise jaws, and that's just a nice way of making sure that you get a good solid grip on the piece that you're actually cutting with it so it's not going to start wonking it uh, you know wobbling around and making a mess right so i'm just going to clean down on the uh, milling machine get this into the milling machine we're going to which is the machined edge there we are that's the machined edge we're going to go that edge first go across the top here get that down to 55 and then we can do use that edge with a square to make sure we get that this is then square Get that all cleaned up, flip it around, get it down to 44. And once we've done that, that's the right size. We're going to be holding it in the vise there, clean off the back, flip it over, clean off the front. Hopefully these uh, markings on here aren't that deep. They don't feel like it. And so we'll end up with a nice clean slab of brass to work with. It's then a case of marking the center, getting a big hole in there, which is probably going to be in the forger on the lathe, and then the four corner holes to bolt it to the frame stay in the middle of the locomotive. Right guys, give me a couple of minutes, just gotta clean down the mill and uh, get this into the vise and we'll get the first cuts made. All right, back in a tick. Right guys, I've seen that everything's cleaned down there. Got the piece in the vise, got that original machine side down. And as you can see, I've got, because this is an uneven surface, I've got a little bit of emery cloth in here just to give it a bit of bite. That's nice and solid. I've, I've tightened the vise up quite well. I'm just touched off, going to go down maybe 0.2 of a millimetre just because it's a saw cut on a machine. It's not likely to be dead even. I think if just by a quick look at it, it's actually higher at this side than this side. So it's a little bit uh, skew with. And um, 
yeah, I'll take the first couple of cuts and then we'll just so you get the idea. Then I'll go off camera and I'll bring it down till it's uh, 55 on this dimension. All right, guys, let me just see if I can center you up a little bit more. Sorry for the wobble, guys. But I'll just get you back into the middle of the frame. That looks better. Right, oh, guys, it's going to get a bit noisy, but uh, that's the point. Two on the table. So here goes. There we go, guys. That's a lovely finish on there. Uh, had the machine running at about 660 RPM. This is a 50 mil cutter with seven little inserts in it. So it's doing a nice job. Right, I'm gonna go off camera, bring this down to the 55 dimension, and then I'll set it up so we can clean off. Uh, actually, no, I'll show you the setting up because we've got to get a square onto this to make sure that everything is square in relation to each other. Right, guys, I'll be back soon once I get this down to size. Right guys, a couple of minutes have passed, last cut, just over half a mil coming off here now, still producing a beautiful surface, so easy peasy, the drawing state, so long as you're within 0.2 of a millimetre, you'll be fine. So this is the last cut to bring this down to 55, here goes. Absolutely lovely finish. I'll just pop that out and we'll have another quick measure just to be on the safe side. It should be pretty close. Right, if I come into focus now, where are we? Oh, here we go. Oops, so I'm just mashing up on the, as you can see, 55. And that is absolutely on the knocker. Perfect. Right. Okay. This is now going to go, just go into the bench vice. I've just got to get all these burrs off, smooth it, because they'll mess things up otherwise. And then we'll get it set up in square, get a square up against this, and get it in the vice, clean this top surface off, and neat and tidy, flip them around, get rid of that sawn surface, and then we'll end up with our block that's 55 by 45. All right, guys, give me a tick. There's no point showing you the filing. I'll do that off camera. Okay. Right, so we've got the all the burrs filed off, all the rough edges and the sharp corners. Got here an adjustable square. So nice. Oops, yeah, that's how adjustable it is. It's not even tightened up. Nice square corner on it. And this, is, importantly, is narrower than that. 
So this I can just slide in at the side of the part. This is going up against one of the machined edges that I've just made. And I'm just going to pop that about until you feel it kind of linked together. The vise itself is just nipped up. Just double check. There we go. That feels about right. And we can lock that down there. Put the square out the way so it's nice and safe. So we're reasonably sure that that is now square in the vise. Let's get you back into frame and I'll zoom in. Now you can. So again, just use the nice sharp corner on that square in there. Add that bit back. So I'm on the bottom of the vise there. That's nice and tight in there. And we're going to be square enough for what this needs. Right, guys, so I'm just going to move the vise across to over here. Uh, touch off, get one clean surface. Yep, that's the hacksaw surface. Get that nice and clean. Again, take the burrs off, flip it round, and then machine the other side down to size. All right. Uh, yeah, there's no point, not much point showing you that. I'm just showing you it. So I'll bring you back when I'm uh, taking the last cut on the fourth side. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay, guys, a few minutes have passed. Got the piece down to size now. So that's 55 by 44. It's all nice and square. As you can see, there's no daylight under those. All four corners. Yep, lovely. I've also just used the, the edge of a ruler just to see which of these sides is the flattest. And pretty much they're both the same. Both reasonably flat. That one maybe. Oh no, that one runs off on one corner. That's right. So what I'm thinking I'm doing is I'm going to put it this way in the machine vise on the mill. Get a cleaning cut off that. I do have... Whew, what is it now? I think this is about eight and a half mil to go at. Eight, two, five, three, three, five. It's about eight point. So I've got about 2.35 mils to come off it. So I'm going to take a, a good, get a good clean surface on this side. First, get rid of all this uh, patterns or whatever it was, the Egyptian stuff. Get that down in the vise and then take this side off. Get it down to six mil. Although, yeah, you can see that if you look down that now, you can see that this side here rolls away a little bit. So, is it that one or that one? Yeah, anyway, clean this side off first. Get that nice and clean. Get it in the, in the vice, the other side. Clean this off. And then we can drill the four corner holes. And once that comes out, all it's left to do is to mark the center, which I'll do with my marking out, marking caliper, and uh, put a center pop in that. Sort the corners out. They could be left sharp. There's no reason why they couldn't. The drawing shows them being rounded off. So I might just rip them on the belt then I should and just take them off a little bit. And then we're off to the lathe and the forger. Right, guys. Uh, I'll get this into the machine vise. Give you a quick up and down on that just to show you what's going on. And I'll get this piece finished down to size and thickness. And uh, we'll, then we'll drill some holes. All right, guys. Back in a tick. So now we've got the bit set up in the mill vise. Uh, as you can see, it's not really held in by much, maybe a couple more. So light cuts, I will just, I don't know if you can see that there, there's just a little shiny bit. I've just touched off, going to take it up by about 0.2 of a mil. Just run a quick cut across there to see what uh, the position is like, and uh, that'll give you the idea. And I'm just going to clean all this patination out of here, all the pattern out of it. And once I get a good clean surface, then quick flip in the vise set it back down and clean it off and get it down to the six mil thickness required. All right, guys, here goes. As always, it's going to get a bit noisy probably, so watch out.
Right, as you can see, almost got it. I'll take it. It's a lovely finish, lovely finish. Right, I'm just going to take another couple of cuts off, but you, you get the idea. I'll get this side done, flip it over, do the other side, and then I'll bring you back. All right, guys, see you in a bit. Right, so this is all cleaned up now. All the sides, nice and square, nice and flat, nice surface finish. I've just re-zeroed the corner of the vise like I normally do with the uh, uh, edge finder. So we know that that corner there is zero in both directions. I've then got the trusty little, trusty little drawing to tell me where I've got to go. So it's going to be center drill, drill, center drill, drill, center drill, drill, center drill, drill. Okay, I'll do one, then go off camera, drill the other three, and then I'll bring you back with this on the bench. We'll mark up the center punch for the big hole that's got to go in the middle, and then we'll move over to the lathe to get that one uh, drilled and bored out. All right, guys, here it goes. Going to get noisy. There we go. One down, three to go. And uh, I'll bring you back. There we go. Four holes drilled. I'll just put a little bit of a pencil mark on there to remind me to bore the hole. So all we have to do now, I've got this set at 27 and a half, which is half of 55. So let's just make a nice scratch on that. Go from both sides. There we go. Yep. And then I'll drop this down to 22, which is half of 44. Yeah, 22. Make sure that the 10 lines up on the vernier, which is there. And we'll do the same over here. A couple of, yeah, that'll do us. And then cross in the middle of that. I'll put a center punch in that. And uh, then we'll get off to uh, the four jaw on the lathe. Take that with me. Okay, in a bit. Right, guys, so I've got the piece mounted in the fore jaw. Got the dead center pressed into the little center punch that I had in the plate there. Got the dial indicator mounted on the lathe. And I've been spent some time uh, getting this running as true as I can. You can probably see in this camera here that it's got about one division out run run out on it that camera set camera two might be slightly better view of the dial so this is a 10 millimeter dial, dial indicator and it's good to 0 0.01 of a millimeter uh, so i've got literally probably just slightly less than one division run out on it now which means I've probably only got about three ten thousandths of an inch run out. So that's pretty good. If you really, I, I was going to show you, but it's take, take me 20 minutes. So I'm not going to bother with that. If you really want to know how to indicate in a four jaw chuck, I can do no better than recommend uh, Adam Booth and his uh, YouTube channel. That's a bomb 79. 
Uh, I'll take a look. If I can find a, a link for it, I'll try and put a link in the screen. Or if not, it'll be in the notes. Uh, go off and have a look at these videos. He's an, he's an absolute champion and he does it uh, or has done or does do it professionally. So he knows he can get it done in no time flat, even if it's that far out. It doesn't matter to him. He just gets it done. Right, guys. So I'm going to just pause the video for a little bit, take all this gubbins away. And then we're going to set up with a drill, chuck in the, in the tail stock. We're going to center drill, go to 10.5 millimeter drill, 15 millimeter drill. And then in the tool post, we'll uh, get the boring bar going and we'll bore the hole out to 22. And then that is this plate done. Uh, right, so I'll bring you back in a tick, guys, once I've got all these bits taken out of the way. Right, so taking all the bits away, got the drill chicken, in, sent the drill, uh, plate ready and centered. As you can see, I've pushed the plate in all the way back against the chuck face, so it should be square to the axis of the lathe. The drill chuck, I've just checked it against these narrow jaws. It, jaws. It, uh, it's going to be close, but it shouldn't make any contact. But if it does, then I'll stop and rethink. So uh, let's get this going, guys, and let's get this hole put in. Drop that down to a slower speed. Drop the speed down again. Me too. There we go. That's as far as the drills will take us. I'll just take the drill out at the tailstock so I don't stab myself and I'll get set up with the boring bar and bring you back. Right, so got the boring bar in the in the uh, quick change tool post now. 15 mil hole in the middle of that plate. Gonna take it out of 22. Just gonna take my time on this. There's no point rushing it. Uh, so I'll, I'll do the first couple of cuts and then I'll uh, stop the video and bring you back when I've got it done and it's on the bench. All right, guys, let's do this.
Okay, so there you get the idea. Uh, as you can see, I've got the tool out, sticking out, what, maybe 45 mil. I'm working between the chuck jaws so I can mount this plate up against the chuck face. So it's going to stay nice and square. It's not going to move on me. So light cuts are the order of the day. Slow and hot, slow and easy. And we'll get that hole up to 22 millimeters. Right, guys, I'm going to stop the video and I'll bring you back when I'm on the bench and this plate is then basically finished. Okay, back in a tick. Right, so there we go. A few minutes have passed. Got the whole board out to 22. As you can see, got a nice finish on that. So I might, those corners I've already filed off the edges, so they're not razor sharp. I'm not going to bother rounding them off. I either like the look at the way it looks, and it's not going to make any difference the way the pump works. Uh, front face, back face. This is the face that was up against the uh, four jaw chuck. Four jaw, yeah, the four jaw chuck. Huh. And uh, not that it makes any difference. I got it square anyway, in the right parallel and everything in the thickness. Uh, so, right, this piece is ready. Uh, it bolts. I've checked the bolt hole. It bolts nicely onto the stretcher in the middle of the locomotive. Uh, stretches in the middle of the locomotive, this, and the pump drives off the front axle. And, of course, the steam motion drives on the rear axle. Right, guys, so, back in a tick. Right, guys, so, there we go. One other little piece, piece done for the locomotive. Part of the axle pump, the axle pump flange. Uh, looks like a little bar of gold with a few holes in it, doesn't it? Really nice. Nice surface finishes all the way around. The bore's nice and smooth. Bore's out to 22. Although that wouldn't have really matter. It could have gone to 22.5 anywhere around there because, of course, when the pump body goes in through this hole, we'll make the two parts match and it'll get silver soldered together. Right, up, guys, I'll bring this video to a close by saying, like I always do, if you can find it in your heart and soul to give me a like, a subscribe, and maybe just hit the bell. If you're a watcher, please, please, please subscribe. This channel is going really well. It does my heart good. It really gives me the motivation to be out here. Okay, guys, this is the chef signing out saying see you later.